Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Gallagher and Dr. Simperman, and we're here today to talk about some weight loss tools that you can use in your journey to lose weight and manage your weight, and then to bust some myths that go along with that. So if you want to reach us, you can reach us at 724-903-0506 or visit us on the web at middlesexchiropracticcenter.com. And as always, the information presented in this program is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease, illness, or health condition. The statements presented in this program have not been evaluated by the FDA. And as always, you should consult with a licensed healthcare professional before beginning any type of treatment. And because it was such a cold wintry day today, we decided to put a little picture that reminds us of spring up here. Uh, some echinacea growing in our garden, which again will soon be in bloom in a few months. Thank goodness. So looking at some statistics from the CDC, 42.5% of the U.S. population is obese as defined by BMI over 30. 73.6% of the U.S. population is overweight as defined by a BMI over 25. And what does this mean? It means that one in every three adults are considered obese and two out of every three adults are considered overweight. We also see 300 to 400,000 people die each year due to obesity and overweight related diseases and complications costing $117 billion. Now, let's look at some health conditions that are directly related to being overweight or being obese. The top of the list is heart disease, stroke, and high, blood, high blood pressure, diabetes, cancers, including colon, breast, kidney, and esophageal cancer, gallbladder dysfunction, stones, and even ulcers, gout, breathing problems such as sleep apnea and asthma, fatty liver disease, metabolic syndrome and inflammation. And a lot of this is what we see in the chiropractic office, osteoarthritis and joint pain. You know, when you're overweight or obese, your joints are under a lot more stress and this can lead to breakdown of the cartilage and deterioration in those joints. So weight loss tools defined, what does this mean? We hope to give you a few things that you can use at home to manage your weight. Now, these things are just simple, inexpensive ways to keep track of, um, you know, your weight progress. And um, so we're gonna get started. So the BMI calculator, this is something that you could uh, look at online to see what your BMI is, and then you can follow that to see where you need to be to be healthy. We're going to review BMI a little bit further on in the program. And a tape measure simply to use to measure the circumference of your waist and then your hips. And we're going to talk about how to get that ratio and what the significance of that is. A Tanita scale or a similar type scale. And Tanita scale is what we use in the office. And it's a scale that actually will also help us see an approximation of your body fat content, which is important when looking at weight loss. We want to make sure we're losing body fat and not muscle fat. So that's really important. And also a, uh, a blood sugar meter and a blood ketone meter are useful tools as well. And the Precision Extra uh, does both of these things depending on which test strips you use. And you can pick those up at a pharmacy or places like that and probably online as well. Okay. So what is your BMI? So a BMI is defined as the body mass index. That's what the initials stand for. It is a way of describing your height and weight in one number that can help tell if someone's weight is healthy. So they just take your height and weight and then they use a calculation to find out where you stand on a 
chart, a BMI chart. And we have those BMI charts in our office. You can also find your own BMI chart at home and you could actually do calculation using an online calculator. So um, if you can't find it, you can always ask us, we'll give you the chart. And it's a really useful tool um, when determining where you should be with your weight. Now, you know, when you look at your BMI, you have to see that there's normal ranges, which is 18.5 to 25. Uh, that's normal. 25 to 30 is considered overweight and above 30 is considered obese. And there's also subclasses in the above 30, which is uh, three different subclasses, 30 to 35, uh, 35 to 40 and over 40. And I like to point out that the BMI, when I'm working with uh, somebody in the weight loss area, it's, it's a really good way to look at what they need to be or where they need to be to get to the 25 mark um, when they're losing weight. And it's an, a different way to uh, attain a weight loss goal than just pounds and inches and things of that sort. So it just adds to the toolbox. So also another important uh, tool that you can use is your waist to hip ratio. And not only is this a good uh, barometer to see if you're losing uh, inches, it's also, uh, they've, they've found that, you know, certain waist to hip ratios that are out of the normal range can predispose you to uh, some health problems that you probably would rather avoid. And so what you do here is you measure your, with the tape measure, the waist around the top of the belly button and the hips around the larger area of your hips and buttocks. You get these two measurements and you divide the, the waist measurement by the hip measurement. So what we have is, is the women's ideal, which is 0.8. And then um, if you're in the moderate risk, you're at 0.81 to 0.85, and a higher risk is 0.85 or even higher. For men, it's 0.9. For the ideal, moderate is 0.95 to less than one, and over one is, is the high risk. So optimum waist circumference for women should be less than 35 or around 35 inches and for men less than or at 40. And once we go over that mark, we know we're contributing significantly to health conditions, especially cardiovascular disease. So we have a Tanita scale in our office and this is something that can also be a useful uh, tool. Um, with these types of scales, you, if you want to, they give you both your weight and your body fat percentage, approximate body fat percentage. Now you have to be in your bare feet to do this, but when you get on, before you get on the scale, you put in your age, your, your height and your activity level on a scale of one to three, then you step up on there and it gives you your body weight and a rough idea or at least a place, a, a benchmark to start with your body fat percentage so that as you progress on your program, you can look back on it and see if your body fat composition is changing. Good. So now we also have in our toolbox a blood glucose and blood ketone meter. So when you use the blood glucose meter, you're going to record your blood sugar upon waking and then again, one to two hours after meals. So when you wake up in the morning, the optimum waking blood sugar should be 90 or even below. And if it's less than 100, it's in the fair range. So once you're the higher you go or the closer you go to 100, the harder it is for you to actually lose weight. So it's a good way to see where you stand. And then you can check it one hour after eating to see if you have a recovery and that we would want it to be at 130 or below, and two hours after you'd want it to be 110 or below, and five hours later you would want it to be 70 to 90, but I don't know who goes more than five hours without eating, although sometimes when I'm working I go more than five hours without eating. So, um, but that's the glucose meter, and we want to use that to see where we stand, and that actually helps to see if we're able to lose weight. 
And then we have the blood ketone meter. And we talked earlier, the Precision Extra does both blood ketones and blood glucose, depending on which script, st test strips you're using. So when we uh, eat carbohydrates from our diet, they're stored as glycogen, which is food and that is in fuel. And that is in the liver and the muscles. And when we burn that as fuel, really, we release ketones. And as we, we do release these ketones, we also release stored fat. And that can be measured in blood and urine via these meters or urine strips, which aren't as accurate as the blood meter because it goes by color and not by the amount of ketone that is released. So it helps you to see if you're fat burning and there are several types of ketones and the most prevalent that's being measured by the meter is the beta hydroxybutyrate. And the reason why I bring that up is because sometimes you can uh, take a product, the extracellular ketone powder that will have several of the different types of ketones in there to help you to accelerate your body to get into fat burning or ketosis. And so when we look at our meter, we want to look at certain readings that will let us know that we're doing what we want to accomplish. And at least the baseline for fat burning is 0.5 and it goes up to three, which is a pretty good amount of fat burning. The optimum reading for fat burning is 1.5 to 3.0. And you should check your ketones at least three hours after a meal or first thing in the morning. And again, sometimes it's not always recording as well first thing in the morning. Some people do better checking it later in the day. So you're just gonna have to um, see what works best for you. Now we're gonna talk about 12 common weight loss, weight loss myths. And we're gonna bust those myths. Yes, we are. And so the first one would be all calories are equal. Well, that's not true. And I know we've been told that a calorie is a calorie is a calorie, but a calorie is not the same as all the calories. All food have calories. It's a measure of energy of that food as it is burnt in a giant oven and they come up with a calorie content. However, certain foods work through different metabolic pathways in the body. And some of them will cause hunger or decrease hunger. Some of them will affect hormones, whether they'll upregulate a hormone or make it work more or shut a hormone down. So we know that not all food is going to work the same. We know that a carbohydrate calorie does not equal a protein calorie, does not equal a fat calorie. And as we increase our fat uh, protein content and our fat content, sometimes we increase our metabolic rate and we decrease our appetite. So that helps with weight loss hormones. So those are things that are proven scientifically. And so myth number two that we're going to bust is that weight loss is not linear. And this means that you do not go from point A to, a to B in a straight line. So you weigh whatever you weigh, and your goal is whatever it is, you're not going to get there in a straight line. There's going to be peaks and valleys, speed bumps along the way, plateaus where you might not lose any weight. You might gain a little bit of weight, lose weight, plateau. So it's not a straight line pro process. Right. So sometimes um, you retain fluid on some days. Sometimes you don't digest as well. So, and sometimes uh, we don't have the bowel movements that we want. So we're going to have our weight change during the day from day to day. So it's not always a straight line. Myth number three, weight loss supplements work. Well, if they worked, uh, we wouldn't have had to go over those statistics that we did at the beginning of the program. Because we could just take a pill and lose weight and not even think about it, but and eat whatever we want. So, you know, there are weight loss supplements that may help us uh, to get a little bit there, but they're not the be all end all of weight loss. Number four, obesity is about willpower, not biology. Now we're going to dispel that here right now. Yes. So, you know, all the people who are overweight or obese and have tried really hard <clears throat> and people keep telling you you don't have the willpower to lose weight. Well, it's more than just willpower. It's genetics. It's a 
uh, biology, it's your metabolic rate, it's med uh, me medical problems that you may have, like hypothyroidism, which is a slow working thyroid. You could have <clears throat> polycystic ovary disease, depression, insulin resistance, where your body can't use insulin to burn fat, leptin resistance, and leptin is a hormone that tells your body you have had enough stored fat. And if your body is resistant, it thinks it's starving, so you're going to want to eat more. So those things really do influence the obesity and weight loss problem. And it's not always about willpower, although willpower can be an issue for some. I think sometimes where the willpower comes in is when you go to the store and do your shopping. You just use Don't willpower buy, not yeah. to buy things that you shouldn't be eating. That's exactly right. And number five, eating less will make you lose weight. Well, I don't know that this works because a lot of times when people eat less, they actually slow down. You can actually right. slow down your metabolism yeah. when you eat less. You're not going to burn more than you, than you eat. So your body's just going to readjust itself to accommodate for that eating less. Okay, number six, all carbs make you fat. Well, if you're eating refined carbs, sure, you're going to get fat. Things like cakes and candies and sugar. Um, if you're eating better fats like vegetables and fruit and some of the whole grains, as long as you're not overeating those carbs, you're not going to get fat. Number seven, eating fat makes you fat. And we've been programmed to believe this for quite some time now. Yes. So we have to realize that fat is a de calorie dense food, which we talked about before. It has a lot of energy per gram. It's a calorie dense food. And if you eat bad fats, processed foods, you are going to get fat. But if you eat the good fats, your body can use those as fuel and then burn fat instead of making you fat. Number eight, you need to eat breakfast to lose weight. Well, that's not true either because we sometimes skip breakfast because we're doing timed eating or intermittent fasting. And this means that we don't eat first thing in the morning. We have a eight hour window that we eat in and, you know, done this personally myself. And, you know, I usually don't eat my first meal until closer to noon. Number nine, fast food is always fattening. Well, if you're eating food that is bad fast food, sure. But if you're eating a good nutritious shake, that's a fast food. So we're going to change our viewpoint on fast foods. Now, the ones that are out at restaurants and uh, fast food chains probably aren't going to do you any good. But if you choose wisely, you may be able to get away with some of that. Number 10, weight loss diets work. And I think... You know, when people look at diets, they usually get, they, they, diet implies something you go on and then you go off of it. So I've heard patients tell me that they went on this diet and they, you know, they, what essentially they did was change what they were eating and then they lost weight. But then after they got lost however many pounds they wanted to lose, they just went back to eating the way they were before. Yes. And so we know that 85% of the people gain the weight back after they go on these diets within a year. So the only way to um, really look at this is to say that we have to permanently change our lifestyle to manage our weight better. And number 11, thin people are healthier than overweight people. Well, that may be true at some stances, but you don't know if those thin people have weight around their belly, which is harmful and again, causes cardiovascular disease. Um, and also sometimes, you know, thin people can be unhealthy um, just as well as somebody that's overweight. And number 12, diet foods help you lose weight. Well, diet foods are labeled to make you think that they're gonna help you to lose weight and they don't. So junk food is really what your diet foods are. So you have to just be really careful on um, what you're 
purchasing that says it's a diet food. Because, because sometimes the packaging and yeah, the advertising yeah. can fool it's, you. Yeah, it's loaded up with artificial sweeteners or preservatives and things like that, which are really harmful to your body and don't really help you to lose weight. Now, something else that could be frustrating you if you're trying to lose weight or get back to your optimum weight, you could have some undetected metabolic physiological problems that are sort of sabotaging your weight loss. The first one that comes to mind is digestion. You know, if you're not digesting your food properly, it's not going to be absorbed properly. Uh, if you're taking medications that um, cause inflammation in the gastrointestinal tract, or, or if you're taking proton pump inhibitors, which in, uh, decrease the amount of uh, digestive enzymes and hydrochloric acid in your stomach that's important for breaking down the food. These things can all lead to uh, digestive related issues such as dysbiosis, leaky gut system. Exactly. So we also have some issues with if, if people have stealth infections, infections that they don't really know they have that are wearing down their body and aren't allowing them to lose weight. And I've seen this many times with people that have underlying conditions that they weren't sure that they had and they could not lose weight as a result of it. For instance, having a yeast infection in your gut, uh, things like that. And also people have insulin resistance, which is the inability to use insulin because they have inflammation in their body. They have blood sugar imbalances where they uh, won't release fat, sluggish thyroids that are working below normal, the normal body temperature is too low, so you can't burn fat. And, and a lot of times people don't get enough sleep and sleep is important for many things. And it's also adequate sleep is important for, for being able to lose weight. Yes, there's uh, plenty of studies that show that people who lose weight sleep better. If you're sleeping less six hours or less a night, you are not going to have a good weight loss experience. So that's something that you want to repair to help with weight loss. And also we know toxins. We know that the body walls off toxins with fat cells. And so if you look at overweight people and obese people that have more body fat, we can conclude that they obviously have more toxins and their body has walled them off to, to kind of sequester them and keep them away from, from causing uh, metabolic or physiological problems. So uh, that's an indication too that those people have a toxic burden and uh, need to do something about that to make their weight loss uh, progress the way they want it to. So in conclusion, we want to say the use of these tools for success to track and monitor your progress is paramount to your weight loss journey. The blood glucose meter, uh, ketone meter, BMI calculator, using the uh, hip to waist to hip ratio, using a scale, all those things contribute to helping you to see where you stand in your weight loss progress. If you're using those tools and struggling uh, or just want some extra help, we're here, seek professional help for more for a more regimented program or somebody to nag you about what you want to do. <laughs> not really. We will work with you. We won't nag you. We'll try not to nag you, but you'll hear me in your head and, and I'll tell you not to buy this or that. Or mm -hmm. So I hear that all the time. So hopefully um, you can get on a plan that works for you and use some of these tools that we mentioned here today. And we'd like to thank you for joining us and taking the time to, uh, to watch our, our webinar. And as a special, we have 10% off on all these weight loss pro products, these products that you can use to help detoxify and cleanse your body and help you uh, along the way to obtaining your optimum body weight. Well, the, most of these shakes are meal replacement shakes, and you can use them regardless of whether you're trying to manage weight or not. We have several to choose from, from vegan shakes and blood managing shakes, like the Metabo shake is really good to manage your blood sugar. It's a vegan protein. Some people combine that with the Catabo shake to get more of a ketosis type 
uh, program. We could add in extracellular ketone powders, which we talked about before, which help people to stay on track if they want to add some carbohydrates to their diet and still are trying to burn fat. Uh, we have the SP Complete Shake, which is a whey protein, a dairy base, but we also have dairy free. And it's um, vanilla, chocolate, and plain, has a lot of nutrients in it. it's nutrient packed. It is com a complete food, has plenty of protein. The vegetarian version or the vegan version is Veggie Pro, again, vanilla and chocolate. And we have the SP Detox Balance, which is a detoxifying uh, shake that you can make. It comes in chai and plain flavored. And we have the SP 21 Day Purification Program, which has been around for quite some time. And, you know, we've both done it personally multiple times and many, many patients have done it in the office over the years. And it's a great way to uh, get your body's detoxification processes jump started and uh, get you eating better food and get you on a just a good uh, springboard to a successful weight management yeah. program. Breaking some bad habits. It helps yes. you to break the habits. It's a mm -hmm. very regimented program and you have to be ready to do that. But people do have really good success on that program and they feel really good. And then I have, uh, we have two other programs that are more specific if people are struggling with blood sugar regulation or a lot of inflammation in their body, which is preventing them from moving forward in a weight loss program. And so those are short 10 day programs and they really are um, really easy to do uh, regimented, but for a short period of time. So we'd like to say that we have a giveaway for the first four people who call into the office with the WL code, weight loss code, they'll receive a shaker bottle at no with no purchase. They don't have to make a purchase to get a free shaker bottle that will go along with some of the shakes. So if you already have shakes at home, you don't want to buy any shakes, that's fine. And maybe you don't have a shaker bottle or you want another one. So when one's being washed, you have another one to switch off to. So the first four people using WL code will receive a free shaker bottle as a thank you for attending. Well, again, we'd like to thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, you can always contact us at our office, 724-903-0506. Thanks again.